Hey guys, and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk about some of the frequently asked questions that the CIG and RSI website help desk get asked and their customer service department get asked. I'm going to do a video um, like this every so often to update as required when new issues come out. So this is basically Star Citizen hot issues. The idea here is to also help people avoid making ticket requests from... Uh, the RSI support help desk where possible uh, and to answer any other FAQs that you might have about current issues and commonly asked things. So a couple of basic ones first. The alpha phase in general. Star Citizen is the massively multiplayer online game and it's in its alpha phase with no confirmed release date. Gameplay now is not representative of the finished project um, or product. It is there to test features, mechanics, fix bugs, and balance gameplay. It also combines Arena Commander, which is dogfighting and racing, uh, the Persistent Universe, which is currently referred to as the Mini PU, uh, and eventually Star Marine, which is the first person shooter and Satterball and all that sort of jazz. Squadron 42 is the single player campaign being released as three episodes. Episode one is scheduled for release in 2016. Actions in the single player, uh, universe affect your character and standings in the Star Citizen massively multiplayer online game. Star Citizen and Squadron 42 are each available standalone from each other for $45 excluding taxes, but if you purchase one of them, you can add the other as a bolt-on for $15 extra. You're offered this at the checkout when you buy a applicable package. If you want to add this bolt-on at a later date, just melt your ship package and then repurchase through the checkout again. You can do that if you've done something by accident or whatever. Let's talk briefly about concept ship sales. So Star Citizen runs concept sales for ships that they will be adding to the MMO massively multiplayer online universe. They typically go on sale when a ship has finished its basic concept art um, and they've got the concept down of its role and all that sort of stuff but active development on that project on that ship has yet to begin. At the moment there is likely to be a concept sale every six weeks ish and um, we've just had the Misk Prospector which is a mining ship and in the future we're going to get amongst others the Drake Buccaneer which is the pirate interceptor, the RSI Polaris which is a small corvette, the Asperia Prowler which is Possibly a boarding ship, Tavaran in, na in nature, certainly. Uh, the Drake Dragonfly space motorbike. And um, there's also going to be various variants of ships that we already have uh, that will go on concept sale, so new variants of base ships, uh, as well as other human and alien ships which are yet announced or we don't realise are going to go on concept sale. They'll also put those on concept sale at some point. There's obviously going to be some um, little surprises as well down the lines. Ships don't have a release date when it comes to concept sales, so we don't know entirely when they're going to be hangar ready or flyable. Um, backing at that concept stage, you should know that you might be waiting a while to get that ship in your hangar or to get that ship flyable. You will be given some form of loaner ship until your ship is ready though, so you can at least fly something if it would, would be your only ship. And you don't need to buy a, sh a ship. You don't need to buy these concept ships. CIG are offering these pledge ships to help raise funds for Star Citizen's development. The funding generated by these sales allows them to include deeper non-combat orientated features in the Star Citizen world. And all concept ships and all ships in general will be available in-game for in-game credits in the final universe. And they're not required to start playing the game. They're all obtainable in-game all you need is that $45 Star Citizen game package. The goal here is to make additional ships available that give players a different experience rather than a particular advantage when the Persistent Universe launches. Another hot topic at the moment, and in general normally, is ship upgrades and downgrades. Upgrades for ships that you can get through the RSI website are there to keep the contents of the original package. So the package you originally bought that you're going to upgrade from. So this keeps the, the flair, the insurance and extras that you'd have there. If you upgrade a ship package, you keep the original contents. The only thing that changes is the actual ship. So if the original package that you are upgrading from has lifetime insurance or three years insurance, when you upgrade it, the new ship will have three years insurance or lifetime insurance or whatever the original pack had. If a ship is on concept sale with lifetime insurance, for example, at the moment, the Misk Prospector, and you upgrade a package that has three months insurance, 
it will not get lifetime insurance. It will keep that original package three month insurance. So it keeps the parent pack or original package contents. If you purchased a standalone MISC prospector during the concept sale, it would have lifetime insurance. And if you upgraded this MISC prospector that had lifetime insurance later, any other ship that you upgrade it to at whatever phase would inherit its lifetime insurance status. This is true of any insurance level, three months, six months, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, all of that as well. Downgrades wise, at present you are unable to downgrade to the MISC prospector or any other ship if you have a higher um, tier ship package. You're unable to do downgrades at the moment. There is a possible downgrade system in the works that may allow this functionality in the future. It should function in the same way as upgrades in the fact that it keeps the original or parent package contents. Obviously though, you can just melt your package at this stage if you want a different ship and then go grab uh, a ship on concept sale or grab a different ship by paying with store credits from your melted ship. Something that people seem to ask a lot about as well is missing UEC. Each game package comes with some UEC, United Earth credits, which is the in-game currency for when the game goes live. This will only be attributed to your account from game packages, if specifically for UEC from game packages, once the Persistent Universe goes fully live. You can purchase UEC from the um, store page on the RSA website for use now if you want, and then you can spend that in the Voyager Direct store, but package UEC, literally the UEC that comes from a package, will only be attributed to your account when that game is 100% live. Another common question is about merchandise and their shipping dates that you can order from the pledge store. So some items like dog tags and star maps are pre-orders, check these when you purchase them, uh, and shipping dates are subject to change, but at the moment the shipping dates are as follows, are currently planned as anyway, dog tags for June, star maps for May, the patch set is currently now shipping, the Anvil Aerospace mouse pads are in June, and the Jump Point Volume 2 is in spring. Uh, as soon as these items are shipped, you will get an email with a tracking ID, and please note that as soon as you gain that shipping notice, they are unable to correct your addresses and redirect items, so make sure that you are aware and you've changed that shipping address before that happens. Um, so, uh, and it can take up to six business weeks for them to clear export and customs as they are shipped from China. A very commonly asked question is about PTU invites. So the PTU or public test universe is a stress test. It's the, the pre-patch that some people get access to, which is done before establishing a stable version for the live build of alpha testing and Star Citizen. It, it offers no exclusive content that would not be otherwise published to the alpha live eventually. If you would like to increase your chances in playing in PTU builds, participate with the issue council, submit accurate bug reports and participate in any stage of the PTU builds that you do get access to. The PTU is normally released in stages with a small task group normally getting access to help ID the major bugs and then it gets rolled out to more and more people until a live build is completed and ready for public consumption. Please do not contact customer service requesting an invite to the PTU. This is something they categorically cannot assist you with, uh, especially during this particular test period, and you will know if you've been invited via email notification. This also includes subscribers and concierge. Please do not make tickets for PTU invites. They can't, they just can't do them. And that's it for this episode of Star Citizen Hot Issues. I also have various tutorials from the basics of Star Citizen to explanations of game mechanics to guides on getting more from your Star Citizen experience and even ship buyers guides explaining the ships and their roles. Uh, links to all of that in the description. Anyway guys, if you'd like to see the latest hot topics as well and the FAQs for Star Citizen, then go to robertspaceindustries.com slash help. Uh, I will update these as and when the times change and more hot topics and FAQs get developed and more questions get asked and all that sort of stuff. Please do not forget to like and subscribe um, for more Star Citizen content. It really does help me and I will see you in the verse.